Hi everyone, welcome back to our studio. Actually now, I've been filming a lot out at our, our uh, studio art and art gallery out in Sydney, Nebraska. Now I'm back at our place in Pennsylvania for just a little bit, so you'll see some fun videos coming from here as well. See them back and forth. I'm in the classroom actually here in our uh, studio out in Pennsylvania, and I'll be here for the next several videos, okay? I wanted to film some today about, because I get a lot of questions about the pedaling, and one of the comments that... Uh, uh, I saw on the video was I watch all of your videos. I'm having trouble with pedaling and I watch all of your pedaling videos 10 and 20 times. And so I got to thinking, you know, when I study a technique, I like to watch those things over and over again, but I also am, am hungry for any kind of video that shows it multiple times. So I understand that. I understand that in the learning process. That's what we do. So I'm going to film several videos and showing you different ways uh, to pedal flowers. And uh, some from what I call very much direct uh, pedaling of, of the flowers, of the roses, structure-wise, so you can see it structure-wise. Because if you're a learner or a left brain like me, you need to really see some structure with it. And then the other way is what I call implied pedals, okay? Now, what's the difference, you know, between them? Well, I have, since I'm back out here, I have a whole bunch of different types of paintings out here I can show you. So here's a tray that I, put, I painted, um, you know, and I always tell by the numbering system that I have here. Um, so I painted this actually just about one year ago. I painted it in October of 2019. It was my 392nd painting of the year. And the little number, the little zero up here stands for it's an original painting. So on this painting that I did here, this, this set of roses here, you see there's not very metal, many petals in here. And some people like a softer look like that. Now this one I was doing a lift-off technique, and you could even see some of the texture right there. But trying to get... Um, some contrast through the colors, not through heavy pedaling. So what I call this area, like right in here, is what I called implied pedals. They're pedals that I put onto the rose, or it's for imagination. You know, it's like I'm a big fan of Monet and Monet's paintings, and... Um, read a lot about what he said about, you know, leaving at least 25% of each object really to the imagination of the viewer. Don't give you know, everything, uh, you know, completed. So, and then that's just, that's just one of the philosophies out there. This one that's here, very different. Here's where I uh, completely pedal the, the rose. So you can see all of the petals here. Now, in some of this pedal, I use a very casual pedal technique and then almost a stroke pedal technique. And I'll show you the difference here in a minute. But I'm filling up a rose. So here I don't have that many implied petals at all. They're more direct. So it gives a, a completely, you know, different look to the rose that, you know, that you're going to paint here. But how you petal that rose, see? And so there's there's a lot of different ways. So someone tells me, oh, I want you to show me how you petal a rose. Well, <laughs> you know, what kind of petaling technique am I going to use? And that's what I do, guys, is I do techniques. Okay. I follow techniques. This is one that's just kind of like in between all of them here. Um, and I painted this one, let's see, a, a, a year before this other one over here. So this one is a, a you know, a year's difference between that, that one implied one and this one. So here you can see I have some implied petals and some uh, very casual petals, not as many as the others. I follow all different kinds of rules and setups and stuff. This one is a stroke technique. And the stroke technique for the roses make them, um, you know, look completely different. Let's turn it the right side way up here. So I apply these more in a in a in a stroking technique. It makes the roses look a little bit stiffer, I feel. But uh, it is a it's a beautiful technique and it's a classic technique and it's uh, you know many hundreds of years old and so you know when you're pedaling stuff you can use strokes you can use implied you can use casual you can blend the two types of them together you could use negative painting there's a lot of different ways I'm going to walk you through 
in several of these videos. I'm going to put these all in the correction, the rose correction set, uh, video, and we're going to tackle some of this and still paint some birds and some other things and some other challenges, okay? So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these videos that come out, okay? And uh, let's get going. So I have my normal palette out here. This is my uh, my Hansa Yellow, Darulite Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, uh, Naphtho Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, Red uh, Violet, Quinacridone Violet. Now, I'm going to put out also uh, Medium White. Medium White is a color that sits right down around a value 7, 7 to an 8, depending on, you know, the, you know your scale and stuff, but right around a value 7 or so, 7 to an 8, right in here. How about a 7.5? It's just right between the two. And uh, it is a good color to, if you're having problem, because so many of the, so many of my students have problems getting their roses too white. So you can start your roses. As a matter of fact, I'll do that today. I'll start them out with medium white, and then I will only use white towards the end of my rose, and that will keep the rose from getting too white. So if you have a problem with getting too much white, losing the whole front of your rose, use some use another color. Don't use pure white. You're just using too much white. Not you're not getting the values in there. So let's uh, you know let's help ourselves out by getting some values in there first. This is a normal. Um, uh, tempered masonite panel here. This is 11 by 17. Matter of fact, it's just an old one I had here. And uh, I'm just going to cover some of this up and we're going to practice. And I'm going to take out a color here, which is a medium beige, which is right down here to a 405. Uh, this is a, a nice neutral color. I haven't painted on it in a while. And I got back and I saw, you know, I had this painting here with these white roses on And I do... The neutrals are some of my favorite colors. I am not a, a really a high contrast painter. I paint them because I'm a paint to sell artist. I sell all of my stuff. So I paint everything that my customers and my collectors and stuff like. But I like a lot of the neutrals. So I'm going to go today to this medium beige. And I'm going to take my three quarter inch brush. And we're just going to plow some of this on to my background here. I like this. This type of color here. And I'll probably soften some of this out with a paper towel. And I have a little water. I don't have any extender out or anything today. You could, you know, if you're, you know, in a nice hot, dry area here. Right today here in Pennsylvania, when I look out the studio windows there, it's raining. And <laughs> we haven't had a lot of rain in Sydney for a while. But I'm just going to just pull through and soften some of this out to give some interest, some background interest and stuff to the painting. I like that kind of stuff. And uh, it won't dry out here because it's raining out today because that means the air is pretty saturated with moisture so your paints won't dry quite as fast. So that's one reason why I don't have any extender up. I won't need it for anything. And, then, and I'm generally an acrylic painter now. I used to use a lot of extender which keeps the open time to the paint, but I don't do that very much anymore. Let's go ahead and let's just start petaling the rose. Let's take some of our medium white. So when you look at your medium, you know, these two colors here, you have a lot of difference here value-wise. You're down here four or five in your base, and you're up here, you know, with a seven or eight here on your uh, lighter rose. Now, since this is wet, this is going to mix a little bit. So you can let it dry a bit. Or there's another great technique that I showed you in one of the, one of the other videos of Rembrandt too, which is called a wiping out technique, which is really a lot of fun, is take some of the, the background color out, leaving it, you almost create like a ghost rose. Imagine, you know, a ghost rose here with, uh, you know, with uh, your background taking some of the stuff out of where you might want to put a, you know, rose. And then that gives you the ability to really set the color on. And as you collide out here with these beiges and stuff, it will allow you to tone your rose down a bit. And now if you're painting in the summer or where you are, where it's summer where you are, because I know I have a lot of you in the southern hemisphere, you know, painting along with me, you might want to add some extender if you want to do something like that. And that'll give you a, a little bit more working time. But it's wet out today, so these will stay wet for a while. Let's put another one down through here. I'll put the two roses together so we can show some differences. And I'll grab a new paper towel. Some differences here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move these over here so easier for me to grab. 
So I am, I'm going to put down basically a value 7 or 8 right up here. Build the main body of the rows up here. Now, everything that you do, everything that you do, if, whether I'm painting implied petals or structured petals, is I always paint for movement. So I'm always kind of envisioning the bowl. The most important part that I tell you in all the videos, and I'll say it 700 times if you need to, if you're a left brain like me, you need to hear it 700 times. It, we want to paint the movement. So we got this rounding bowl here, and we have our reaching petals, our outside petals that are gonna come right into here. I wanna build, I really wanna build the front of the bowl of the rows up here like this, so it comes forward. But I never wanna lose the most important part of that rose is the bowl shadow right down here. The rounding part of the bowl shadow here, okay? That is what we want to preserve in everything we paint, all right? Now, let's, um, you could use a cool color. I could use a, a semi-cool color here. We'll grab some quinacridone, some yellow oxide, put it together here. We'll grab it just a little bit darker than what our, our background is here. Now I'm going to touch right down here. So here I'm envisioning the top of my bowl. Here is my circle of my bowl. Here is the outside circle here of my of my petals. And I'm going to envision the center circle here right in here, that is where the rose is going to be. So I'm going to come right down in here, right next to the front of the bowl. So here's the front of the bowl, right in the front. Tap that, and then what I do is lift off, lift off the pressure, lightly touch this. So I'm putting most of the darker color down inside the throat of the rose. The movement is up and around, and I will sometimes choppy this up. I will sometimes push petals in and pull out this way if I'm painting a tea rose or something, which I'll show you in other videos. Okay, but that's going to be the bowl of the rose. Now, sometimes I'll push up to hide that little lower circle like that. And, or sometimes I do it with a stroke. Sometimes I'll take some of this extra color and push just a little bit of that pinker color right into the front of the rose like that. And when I do that, I generally go to a darker color. So let's add a little darker, little quinacridone and some red violet right down in the very center. Now this is going to give us contrast. Let's lift the pressure now and just do small little half circles here around and out. And leave the little marks. Tap little marks like this. That's the movement. That's the movement into the center of the rows that you want to leave. Now, sometimes I'll highlight in there, but a lot of times in the center of the rows, I do a lot of the painting with the dark. And if I get too dark, I'll take some light color and move it back in or just push and soften it out. But I do a lot of that with the dark many times. Now, sometimes I do what I call collapse the rows on one side. Now, what that means is rather than having it perfect like this, I will open up the rows with some of my original or a softer color, I'll open up the rose a little bit onto this side, on the downward side here, which makes the rose a little more relaxed, okay? I don't always do it, but I do like it when I do do it. So like on this one over here, you can see on this side here, I collapsed, I opened up and then collapsed the rose with, and this one I didn't. You can see it very tight right up here. Those light colors are very tight all the way up and around, and this one is more collapsed off to the side. What, you know, what makes that determination that you're going to do that? You know, it's just interest within the composition. You're an artist. You want to, you don't want to, you know, in decorative painting, here's the way. In decorative painting, I used to show a rose, and then we went through and repeated that rose through many times throughout the composition. So we learned one rose and we repeated that rose. And you'd put that on furniture pieces and everything else. And I did that for years. When you head more artistic, you paint one rose and then you never paint another one like that in that composition again. So each rose has to have its own personality, its own interest. And so it's very hard for a de like for me, for a decorative painter, and if you're like one, you know, a decorative painter also, moving into the arts. It's hard because you paint one rose and then we tend to repeat it. That's how we were trained. But you don't want to do that. What you want to do is give each rose its own character, which means you're going to stroke it different. So 
you look for different ways. Some you make the queen, some you make you break down and open up the rows, fall it down one side. The stroking patterns are different. Number of petals are different. Colors are different. You're an artist. You're creating a composition of all different kinds of roses out there, and no two roses are going to be the same. So maybe I open that one up. Let's put a little more yellow with some of this, maybe, and we'll look for a bowl shadow right down here. And we'll push that in. See how this is just still wet here. And it's it's all wet because it's raining out today. So the air is very humid. So it doesn't dry as well. It will dry. It'll take, you know, just a little bit longer. So where I, what I do when I pedal. Now what I'm doing here. Here's very important. I'm going to take this color and see I just model it through so I get some different colors. I like when you know you see a little more yellow pop out sometimes through here. I picked that my light is going to come here from the top and then I'm going to have the shadow moving down here all the way out through even to my reaching petals. I can drop it out through here a little bit as well. Now what you want to do is don't do this. I did this for years, all the way up and around like this, making a perfect circle all the way around. We don't want to do that. We want to express the light coming in from here, so we don't want to have that. Matter of fact, that's starting to dry up there a little bit. So what I'll do is take a nice dirty finger here with some water, and see the water will reconstitute that again. Water is the is the solvent of acrylics, so you want to just top that in. You could also put some some medium white back in it. But I want to keep that shadow from maybe right up around here, a little bit past halfway or so, to down to this side down here. That will keep the roundness to your flower, the shadow side and the light side to your flower. That is kind of important uh, for you know what, what you're going to be doing here. Now, the other thing is, this bull shadow is not as dark as the deep shadow that I have here. If I put this bull shadow as dark right down here, I start to flatten my rows out. Okay, so I can come pretty close to it. I'm just going to push this and let this kind of soften out here and just like that. So I can get some more contrast in there, but I always want I want the viewer to come in here towards the center of the rose. This is right right at the opening of the throat of the rose is where I really want to have a lot of interest. And so that's where I um I want to keep the color the darkest. The lightest color and the darkest color are going to come right in here. So now let's go back to our medium white. Let's build the medium white right back up in here again. Now it looks it looks like the medium white is a lot lighter and that's because it's starting to dry out here and so the colors acrylics dry a little bit darker so that's what kind of gets a little confusing sometimes you think you're light enough and then it uh, starts to dry down and then you keep adding more and more and more white and pretty soon your whole rose is all white okay so you don't need to really do that but I'm gonna paint with the medium white here first I'm gonna let some of this happen I'm gonna take just a little chisel because I like the red here and just put a chisel right here, just to edge, just to edge. This is what I call the petal edging technique. I take just the tiniest little bit of paint, and I just draw the edge of the petal right there like that. And I don't disturb any of the other shadow there. Don't pull it down too far. Just, you know, think small. Think working small. You can draw little petals here. Now, how can you do that? Because Every movement that I do in my rows when I base it in, from here from the beginning when I base it in, is I'm painting the roundness of the bowl here. So the movement is already there. Now all I have to do is show you where petals are just by a little edge, and I can show you the edge. That's all I need to do to really say that there's a petal. And the shadow and the movement, everything else is already done. So I just need a little edge to just draw on the edge of the petal here and you know that that will make petals here all I have to do is just soften out or what I call the shear off the edge of that petal like that and that will start to make petals so it's not you don't in decorative painting and all the techniques I did for years and I taught them for years is we pulled and we made each petal sometimes we took a little shadow and we went up and around with these types of flowers you don't do that you make sure that you're darker underneath here so all I have to do I'm gonna put just a little water in this 
and I put water in so that my paint thins out. I, I like to use my paint a little thinner back here, then it's easier to shear off, a technique we call shear. If I use it thicker, it's harder to do that. So I'll put take a little thin paint. Let's just draw the edge of the petal like that. Okay, just and it's more of a wide stroke. Then I'm just going to shear it off right here like that. And that's going to push it right into the... And that's easy to do because I thinned my paint slightly with some water. And I want that edge. Now, you can do the old technique of side loading an edge. I don't. I load all the way across, so colors all the way across my brush, but I'll pick it up heavier on one corner, like this, so you see it on the corner. So I turn that corner and I draw it, and I'll get a little bead of paint. You can see the texture of that little bead of paint here. Now, the f more I come forward, the more paint I use. That's how I do it. Now, can you, you know, so... As I'm petaling the roses, there's a hundred ways in which you can petal roses. I can leave this one on here real soft. I can, I can take a, a softer color here and push in and leave a little bit of a shadow there for underneath there. I can leave this whole side here, basically like I showed you before with the implied petals. Just push and move like that. If I have petals showing up here, I don't need to do very much over here. If I do, if you do, if you think you have to have every petal, and I come in here and I make a perfect petal like this, I start to flatten the rose and stiffen the rose. So sometimes it's nice just to have just an idea, just a little bit of the petals here, okay? So <clears throat> let's find some areas here that you can definitely see. So here's the bottom of my bowl, okay? Here's the bottom of my bowl right here. Now, all the petals that are on this side of that line, I'm going to pull into it. Matter of fact, what I always do is visualize where the stem is, and I pull in towards that stem. On the top side up here, everything above that line, I'm going to pull down to the bowl. So, if I take a little bit of a color here, and I start a petal out, let's say like this, I want to leave its movement that it's going to pull down and around towards that shadow, right down there like that. That's going to keep the roundness to your rose. And maybe you don't want that much of an edge, just a little bit. On the inside, once I have this outer ellipse, which is here, this is the outer ellipse of my rose that I established, okay? Once I, so I have my outer lips, inside here, I'm, if I put anything in here, they're always going to kind of curl around following that movement that we established here. So if I wanted to put a petal movement in there, a, like a light kind of a petal movement in there, it would follow that inside turn. And just let what happens, happens. If you're pushing with your finger or you're pushing with your brush here, don't always, don't ever pull straight. Always pull with the, the shape and the movement of the rose here. So you have a rounding movement here. For anything that I do here has to come down and round into the bowl. It's like a car merging the lanes, merging in together. Everything you're going to do is going to merge right into that bowl. Whatever I, wherever I come out here, let's take a lighter color back out here. Let's thin that just a bit because I'm going to go to the outside. So if I come out through here, what I'm going to do is imagine and merge right into that, that bowl. So wherever I start, I'm going to then imagine it coming into where it is going into that bowl there. Then I'm just going to blur this line here, what I call shear it off, shear off, take off some of the paint right there, push it off. And then you have a nice petal right there coming in to that part of the rose right there. Okay, now, you know, you can get you can get by with just a few petals on this rose because, you know, you don't need to have a ton of petals. When you paint a, a heavy petal rose, then you, uh, you know, that really shows the sign of someone who, you know, knows how to put them and fold them all together. Just like this, okay, I draw the edge. Now here's the line of my bowl, right? So I draw the edge like this, and then I wipe off like that so that the movement stays to the roundness. I want this roundness here to my bowl. Does that make sense? So I get this nice soft 
little implied or I can I can give it directly with a little more shadow so you can see it or I do it when I start to get really soft it's more implied it's it's not directly I'm not giving it to the viewer directly that they're kind of seeing it but it's not direct okay so here comes this one here and you can see it already starts to really take on the structure of the rose but what's doing it What's doing it is the center and here, okay? So, and what I mean by that is, let's take a little center color, not as dark as that other one. And you'll learn that in other paintings and stuff that I do, but let's put a little center into this one. Let's not open this one up. We'll make this one more like a, like a bud or a younger juvenile rose. Let's put a little shadow of it right down in through here. And you can see just by the marks and stuff that I make earlier and stuff, this starts to already look like a rose. It really starts to look like a rose if I take this light color and I cut across the front part of it right up here first. And then I'll pull down slightly, pull and looking for where is that bowl going to be on that rose? Where's it going to be? And you start to build what looks like the rose. And back here, you would want soft little petals. But what is important here, as you're pedaling here, is, and I say this so many times in so many things, it is, I don't paint, pe I, I do paint those pedal edges, but I paint movement. I concentrate on movement within the rows, not the pedals, okay? If you have the movement correct, the pedals, you don't need very much, just like I showed you here. You don't need very much to say pedals. So if I come out here and put just a little bit of effort in and out like this, in and out, boom, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, like that, okay? And give the viewer a nice look to the bowl of the rose, where that row, where that bowl is going to be on that rose, okay? Let's put a little more color interest into it as well. A little bit of yellow, move that around. You can hear the, I don't know if you can, my, microphones can pick up the birds out there just uh, chirping away. So they don't like the dogs now back out in the yards. But uh, we'll put that dark color in and we'll put a little bit more on in here. So now, so you have this one that I'm developing here. Now, so I have the movement. So here, what's the movement? Here I'm pulling down slightly. As I get next to the bowl, I'm pulling this way. That's the bowl. That's the movement of the bowl. In and out a bit here for the in and out heading, merging into the bowl. You can see some of the movement into the paint. That is so very important. I like to use a lot of thin color to establish movement. Just like if I want to really give this rose here some, some a better look is I'll establish the movement. I don't need to establish the petal yet. I just need to establish the movement. And see, all of a sudden that rose starts to come light. I don't need to paint a petal. I need to paint movement. Let's put some pink right out over here and push in and out right here like that. That puts some of my movement right in in there. And all of a sudden it starts to look a little bit more like a rose, okay? And the petals, if you're not careful, the petals can just make it look stiff. And so you want, we want to uh, be careful about that. now. So I have the movement. It, the movement is tight up and around. The movement is the bowl. That's the bowl. And the movement here is up and down into that bowl. Outside, everything below this line, the line of the bowl, let's take just a bit of that dark, everything below the line, the shadow line of this bowl here, is in and out, out in and out, in and out, in and out. So you can see this is going in and out to that, to that, um, to the bowl, okay? Because it's got to kind of, you got to imagine the petal coming in like this, tucking up underneath the bowl. That's what's going to happen. It's going to come out from the bowl here. So now if I want to turn this into a petal, you know, I hear rose. What's the, what's our going to be our rule on the roses? Nothing is the same. So I don't want to, in a stroke rose, we'd make all about the same petals. Three strokes make the petal. 
But here, maybe I'll make a bigger, lar larger, wider one like this. Just push it in like that. Now, it's going counter to the movement, but that's putting on a nice edge. And then I've got to take the movement in and out just a bit, some way. Either sometimes I'll push it with my finger. Well, many times I like to push it with my finger. But I just got to take some of that movement in and out. So if I take a little bit darker, more pink one here. This is just soft light color, and I'll pull in just a bit. That gives it a nice petal edge. Doesn't take much. See, I'll just draw a little bit of an edge here. See, just a little edge, and that makes a petal. See, that makes a nice soft petal. And I did it with just a tiny little bit of paint right here on the edge, and I just push the edge like this. Turn your brush not completely flat. Turn it just a little bit so that you're drawing and concentrate on drawing the edge like that. Okay, then a little bit of movement in and out. Just a little bit of movement. Light, light, light pressure. Not very much paint. And then just push it like that. And you have a petal. You have a nice soft petal right there. Okay. And for me, when I slow down like that to show you that, that's basically the movement. That's going to make my roses look stiff because I'm, my old decorative painting habits are going to come back and I'm going to make that a perfect little petal and nice little edge. And that's one reason why I talk to you so many times in all these videos about speed, about painting fast. I paint fast to break my habits. If I slow down, my stroking habits from, you know, 30 years of painting decorative painting is going to come back. And so I paint so fast that I break that habit. It's by painting its the strokes really fast and painting my whole painting as fast as I can, I don't get perfect. Does that make sense? And I keep moving. It keeps myself moving. That is for me. That's not going to be for all of you, but that is for me. Slowing down can be really, and trying to practice, what are you practicing? You're practicing to paint a petal, and then pretty soon all your petals are exactly the same because you're practicing that. Okay, and that's a hard thing, I know. And I found that, okay, I'm gonna paint this look and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it and I'm just gonna paint it. And you know, it's by sheer repetition and I'm what am I thinking? I'm thinking different. Every single every single petal I put on, I'm thinking different. Make it different. Don't make it the same. Change the color, change the angle on your brush, change the pressure. Okay. A lot of different things. Now, so we have the basics of a, of a good rose here. We could take some medium white, a little bit of our pink and stuff here. We could add a few little petals here. I'm coming right into the bowl line. That's real close, but that's right into the bowl line there. And let's just pull in and across, and then the movement goes in and out of the bowl. And put just a soft little petal there. Maybe one back here. It's got a head right back down. I always imagine that stem. It's got to head right back down towards that stem. Push that color in. And you start to softly petal your roses here. Okay. Now, I'm using just medium white. You're going to see a big difference in a moment. But let's just go with some more medium white. Maybe put a bit of yellow into this here. Let's, let's draw another little uh, set of petals. Let's put it right there. And I always tend to cross these two so they don't uh, get exactly the same. Now, so I've drawn it on. It's it's at the wrong angle. See that? That's at the wrong angle. I don't worry about that because I'm going to fix that angle now just by pushing in and out this way. And that's going to fix the angle that I just put on. See? Now that angle, the movement is here. Does that make sense? So a lot of times I will draw on petals. Like, I'll draw across like this. Now, that's at the wrong angle. So I have to fix the angle in and out. I have to push in and out to give that interest. And sometimes I let it just blur like that, but you're getting the feeling of it in and out. And see how much more casual that is than that one that I put on there that I concentrated on a little bit more. You know, that's the, that's the thing is, that's why I paint fast, so I get those casual little marks and stuff like that. That's what I like. And, you know, it gives, it makes the whole rose more casual. Now, so, bigger ones out here, smaller ones here. We talked about this before in other videos. Smaller ones, that sm these are the youngest petals. These are the middle, these are like the juveniles. These are the older, more mature petals right out through here. <laughs> Dog's asleep now. 
And um, so these are the older, more mature petals out here. Now, and now I just start to do what I call weave the petals in. I start to fill up. Now, how full are you going to make it? Well, that's, you know, that's up to you. Let's go back and take a look at this other tray that I did here all the way at the beginning here. So these are implied petals. See, I don't have anything there. It doesn't really need it. Okay, and this one has a lot of petals here. So when you're looking at this one here to the petals, so here's the outside petals pulling out. Here's the bowl, here's the top of the bowl petal here, and it's pulling down. Do you see how it's pulling down towards where the bottom of the bowl will be here? And here as I'm curving each one of these petals, I'm curving them in to fit into that bowl. Now here you see the bottom of the bowl. You can kind of see it right in here like this. So here the downward stroke here changes to the outward stroke here because here's my bowl. Now here this petal I decided to bring it out and then curve it up. I curved it up so that it was pulled down but then it's got to see how it kind of fits right into the bowl here. And then once I'm past the bottom of that bowl my petals start to, here's a nice short little one, but my petals start to come out, come out. So this comes out this angle. Now if I want to fall them down, I pull it out at a slightly different angle. So the petals come out and they start to fall down like this at that angle. That's what, I, what I'm what i choosing to do on that rose, filling it up. There's a lot of different ways to, to fill that rose up. But you can see, this is the down angle. Here's at that angle. Here's at that angle there. So if I want to put one in as the petals come in here towards the front. Now let's start to add just a little bit of white. Let's go maybe one to one with the white in this. My petals are going to go, are actually going to come a little smaller here towards the bowl. And I'll push that right there into the bowl just like that. Now I've got a lighter petal that's going to come right up into the front. Right out here I've got to sneak one in here. How do you sneak one in here? It's got to be on the chisel. It's got to be something like on the chisel, and this is where I draw a lot of times right on the chisel, and I'll push the bowl right in there like that and push that in. Now, I don't like the way those collide, so I'll just break that off just a bit there. Maybe pull that chisel softly right there. And uh, sometimes if I collide them like that, sometimes I'll put one maybe out a little further in front of it or something like that. But this angle is coming down and in this way here, okay? This one is, now here's the bottom of the bowl picking up that way. If I want to put one right in here, I have to imagine, I have to imagine it's going to come right in here like that. Now the movement is wrong though because I'm pulling this way. So the movement has to go in and out. And this is where I just pull my finger or you could use your brush. Pull your brush in and out like that and set up that petal. Now maybe you want to put a little bit more white onto it. So we'll come back and re restate the front of that. And just push a bit of light right into it there. Maybe a touch more light pulling down right here into the very front of this one. So a bit more white into it. And now you see you've got more lights and stuff coming up into the petal. As you as you go over to this side over here, this is where you would darken down. Get back down. Get some of your cool colors. Get them darkened down so that they're just a little bit lighter than the movement you have there on your background. Let's put just a bit of medium white into that here. And you can go more implied as well. In other words, you don't have to paint them directly here. We'll push like this. We'll set that one up. Kind of like that one. Let's add just a touch of white. Just a touch and break one right across the front here. Imagine the bowl. Where's the bowl? Always, always preserve that bowl. And you start filling up with petals. You know, do you want to put another one across here? Of course, you don't want to... You don't want to make so many that your rose gets so busy, but uh, you know you're you're in charge, and everything that you do is bigger. I mean, it's going to be different. Now, when I come down to this one, I say younger. Here, I'll do my petals more oval, as more as a younger as a younger rose here, 
and not do as many of them. Only the older roses, as they get older, they get more petals. The young ones don't have as many petals onto them. So don't just take a rose like this and small it down to make this. A smaller rose, younger rose, has less petals. Okay, has less petals. So you don't want to petal it as much. So we'll pull in here, pull down. Okay, and I'll pull some, I'll redirect some of these here, pull in. And so you see, sometimes I'll cut across, sometimes I'll pull in a little bit here. What I try to do, and this is, I think, one of the most difficult thing, you know, is to do everything different. And, you know, how do you think of all these different ways of doing things different? And I know it sounds crazy, but I use my Westerns and other things like that uh, to help break the habits in my brush. I have learned over the years that painting roses, the best way to paint roses is not to always study roses, it's to study other things, get my brush moving differently. If you always paint roses and you're painting that in and out, in and out, in and out, that's the movement that you, you will always see. But you use a different movement to paint a cloud. You use a different movement to paint, you know, the water or the rolling of a sea, uh, ocean wave. Uh, you use a different movement to paint the mane on a horse. Uh, and so all of those movements are here in my brush. And I'm not afraid to use them on a rose. I, I'm not afraid to use that particular movement or that strike at that angle or anything like that on a rose because I'm so used to doing it on other things. And so it's movement. I'm using my brush to establish movement in a rose. I am not emulating in and out, always in and out. Sometimes I'm crossing. Sometimes I'm doing different things. Sometimes I'm using the chisel, you know, the chisel of the brush to to make a, a just a, a quick little rose, you know, a quick little petal or something like that. And I'm, so I'm using, you know, different types of things to, to say movement. I don't always use in and out. Some, and I may use just a little bit of it there. The overall movement of the rose is in and out. But some of the movement that I use to apply some, just like applying highlights on the on the front big shoulder muscle of a horse you know you use the you want to apply the highlight to bring them to the to the sun but you also want to give use that brush is going to control the muscle structure of what it is that you're painting see it's all related we're artists we're painting all you know we're painting all of this structure but we're painting this structure for interest and if you only learn one way to paint your roses will always be stiff. So that's why I constantly push all of you to paint other things. If you want to paint other beautiful roses, paint other things. Learn just a little tapping, the little pettit movement, the little tapping movement can make nice flowers. If you want more contrast, so you got this nice rose. And remember, we always have negative painting technique. If I want more contrast in here now and want to do more things, then I can use the negative painting here to not only define my rose a little bit more, see how that pops that out. Look at the contrast that that gives to that particular, to the rose there. I'll use my leaves. I'll use negative painting. I use all different kinds of things here to start to pop it out a little bit more. Normally, I usually put in my, my stems, my directions. I like that power usually do that quite a way, quite front, but let's put this a little softer right back here and push in a little bit of soft movement there into the back. But you can see that starts to pop off that edge of the rose that way there too. So you got a lot of different ways. You got a lot of different ways. Practice these and paint these up. And it's great to grab a board and, and um, you know, to just sit down and just say, okay, let's go for it. You know, let's go for it. So, in basically, what you want to do is start a color. Let me give, for those of you, for my left brain painters, okay, and I know I have a lot of you out there, okay, for my left brain painters, let's take a look at this. So, how would you, if your left brain needs some structure to it, how do you do? First, start your circle, right? 
and do not fill it in totally completely. All your movement is always going to be into the circle, okay? Here. And then, so this is the roundness. This is the roundness of the rose. The bowl is the most important part. That's the first part you see, is the bowl of the rose, okay? Then your outside movements can be in and out a little bit. That's the in and out movement of the rose. So in and out of that bowl is going to be that. Then you're going to establish the inside movement here. So before you even begin pedaling everything, you've got to give the movement. That's a little bright. Let's grab a little bit darker here. Dark color up front, lift the pressure, up and around, up and around, up and around, up and around here. Okay, that establishes your bowl, right? Get your bowl shadow on. Not all the way up and around. You don't need to do that. Get it up about halfway, a little over halfway. Not exactly the same on every single one. Pull some out because it's got to go out. It's got to go round and a little bit out on some of the low side. You can open up the rose by dropping some of that shadow down the low side. And it starts to look like a rose, right? Now comes the pedaling part of it. And how I really, I don't, and this is where I, I have all different kinds of ways to do it, okay? And I'm going to show you one way here to make it easy for you to start and practice. But you're going to need to change it because you're not going to do every single rose the same. Does that make sense? Okay? You're going to have to practice and practice and practice roses doing all and each time looking for difference. Okay? Don't practice the same rows over and over and over again. Make it different. Make it different. Make it different. Then analyze each rose as what's working, what's not working. So I set this up. So we just blurred in some color. We push some in and out for the movement. We push the bowl for the movement. You can see the movement. You can see the movement there. Then what I do is I generally take a little lighter color and I strike across the top part of the bowl of the rose like, like that. I strike it. Now that's going counter to the rounding movement, so I'm going to pull some of it down and then so it rounds out. Okay. Then I usually, I usually, if I'm getting teaching it and stuff, I like to take a little bit of paint, see it on the corner, and I'll draw an outside petal here, a larger petal because these are the largest petals. I'll draw the outside petal. Now that gives me an area in here to fill up with petals. That's what's going to make my rose. So here's going to be my rose coming in and out like that. So I have my target in here for my rose. And I can do it all different kinds of ways here. I can set one out a little further here. Let's open this up a little further than that right there. So I can set a petal out that far there. So I set the bowl, I set the outside, and then I petal going in here. And I add more white, so I'll add more white as I come forward here to make a more, you know, make the petals lighter and stuff like that as I come forward here. So that is a little bit too much curving motion, so I want to curve some back the other way. I always want to give the feeling of this bowl, see, no matter what I do. So here I pulled it that way. I have to, to make this rose pretty, as I have to Turn, I have to give it its bowl. I cannot leave that outward turning motion. I have to round it. So whatever I do over here, let's put a little bit of that pink in it. Whatever I do over here, it has to be able to fit into that bowl, line of the bowl. Does that make sense? Wherever I do, wherever I start, I've got to round it back down into that bowl. That's what's got to happen. That's what I'm imagining. And as I come and build other petals or do other things out here. Wherever I pull in, it's got to go in and out towards that, towards that bowl here. And sometimes I make super big petals. Sometimes I chisel. If I put one in here, it's got to pull right into that bowl. It's got to find that bowl. And that's a bit small for my finger. So I'm going to wipe my brush, put a little bit of my bowl shadow in there, and just incorporate that. And I hit some light right there. And just pull that in, just so that incorporates out. I'll probably leave that edge out there lost like that. You know, make it make it a little bit lost out there. Push some of that color in here. 
And this is how I approach, you know, painting the roses and stuff. And how, so this one will look like a younger rose, but it's a very different kind of a, I mean, same kind of color, same kind of thing, but it's a different rose. It paints pretty fast. Do you do anything back here? That's up to you. Since it's on the outside of my design, I would leave it. Do I always leave it? No. No. I'll leave it today, but I don't always leave it. It's not a rule. The only rule is I like to use the centers darker than the bowl. So I like the centers darker than the bowl shadow. So my, my eye comes into that center instead of the bowl shadow. I like that. And then the rest of it is just the movement. Never lose the bowl. Never lose the bowl. Never lose your center. Your center is what really makes your rose. And then the rest of it is just using a little bit of paint to draw the petal. And then use a little bit of paint on the corner, draw a petal, sometimes big, sometimes small, sometimes little, all different kinds of sizes here. You know, just take a bit of paint onto the corner of your brush. Let's get it more onto the corner here, light color. Just come right around wherever you're going to go, draw it, and now this does not fit into my bowl, but I've got, so I've got to push the movement in and out to my bowl. Does that make sense? I've got to push the movement. Now it fits into the bowl of that rose where it's going to go. And onto the front part up here, wherever I'm going to do, wherever I'm going to do the rose, it's got to sit here and it's got to pull down into, pull it down into the bowl. And that's how that's going to work there. The movement of the rose, the bowl, the inside, the bowl, and the in and out for the uh, reaching petals. That's the most important thing. Okay? And there are thousands of ways to petal. And, you know, spend a couple of days, several roses, and try not to paint them the same. That's the hardest thing to do as an artist. But that's where you step away from decorative painting into the arts. So we look at it, we approach it differently. When I'm doing decorative painting, I approach it as a repetition. When I'm doing the arts, I approach it as individual objects. They are all different. And what I try to do now is I like a lot of like my scrolls and decorative painting, and I combine both which is not normally done. And I take the decorative arts a little bit closer to the arts and it's harder. <laughs> it's, it's harder, but it's a lot of fun. So there's some petaling. This is the first of several videos I'm going to do. And if there's something you want to see closer, hit the comments down there and tell me I'm reading all of them. Um, I, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been transferring stuff back out here to Pennsylvania and everything, and I haven't had a time to con to comment on everything. I'll get, I'll catch up. Just give me some time to catch up. Um, with all your comments and everything that we're doing in all my classes and everything like that. I'll, I'll catch up, guys. Um, but uh, if there's something that you see or you have questions or something like that or you want to see it closer, just hit the comments down there and let me know. I read them all. I read them all. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help you. We're here to help you. And, uh, you know, you just let us know and we'll be happy to do that. Okay? And those of you who want to join us on the, uh, the Academies of Decorative Arts, you can go post your pictures over there. I generally look at a lot of your pictures and stuff. I don't have time to comment on all of the uh, pictures that you're there, there, but there's a lot of teachers into the, our academies over there in our Facebook group. There's a lot of teachers in there. A lot of my longtime students and, and beautiful rose painters are in there, and they can help you, and we're there to help each other, okay? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going to keep doing this for a while, okay? All right. See you on the next one.